Hello, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre where the As It Cursed Me set is being dismantled as we speak. Uh, hopefully that will be out very soon. You're watching Rahana Stupa, and this is with Peter Serafinowicz. It's a really good one, I hope you enjoy it. If you like these podcasts, this is the last one in the series. We're going to put some special things out for you in the next few weeks. Um, then why not go to gofasterstrike.com slash badges and buy a badge, either a one-off of whatever you think this show is worth, or what would be great if you did a monthly badge. If enough people did it, we would never have to ask for any money ever again. Not, we're doing quite well with it, but we need, we'd never have to kickstart again, which would be lovely. So gofasterstripe.com slash badges. If you think all these shows are worth a pound a month, I think it works out about 30p a podcast, then give us some money. If you can't afford to or you don't want to, then carry on enjoying them for free. That's why they're free. Uh, thanks very much for watching. hope you enjoy this. I'm on tour. Go to richherring.com and you can see where I'm coming. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre for the last time in this series. Please welcome a man who has never, in his memory, at least had an altercation with a shepherd. <laughs> it's Richard Herring. <laughs> it's the end of series 10 of Mediatches. Hello. Can't believe we've done it. Uh, we're in the last one of the series. Uh, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. I'm Richard Herring and this is Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast, but I was down at recording of As It Occurs To Me. Uh, <laughs> a lot of cool kids hang out down there. They call it Rehellist, but I don't know if that's gonna... <laughs> but they don't call As It Occurs To Me at Ottoman. That's, that's, the, that's the weird thing. So they're cool, they're half cool, those people. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is the last show. Uh, I was gonna, let's, uh, let's take a little last look at the, uh, the audience we got here. Oh. Uh, I just, uh, uh, before the show, I just uh, reminded people to turn off their mobile phones and realised I hadn't turned off my mobile phone for the whole of, la the whole of last week's uh, recording. My son. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that weird thing on my It's been there for a week, right? That's it, that's kind of... Fucking, that's frightening. It's what, sorry? Ringworm. It's ringworm again. <laughs> Jane Kerry is back again for the second time. <laughs> Terrifying. He loves the show. <laughs> Animal base, that's the thing about it. So, uh, we've got some lovely people. We've got this sort of handsome couple here. Are you together? Yes. Yeah, well, you've done well for yourself, man. With it. It's nice to know a bearded man can get a mate. That is the. What's your name, sir? Ian. Ian, good. And uh, have, you, have you ever had an altercation with a shepherd? In your, you look like the kind of man who would. Have you ever had an altercation with anyone? You, you've got, there's, a, no. there's a softness to you that I now. The beard made me think action man, because it looks like quite... Is that what you're attracted to? It was the beard there when you met, or is it...? No, no and then he grew it, and then you start. That's the thing. That's, men can do that. They don't have a beard. You think, oh, normal, not a nerd, good, good bloke. <laughs> then you're in, you're, he relaxes, grows a beard, and you're stuck with a bloke with a beard. That is a terrible... What's your name? Tara. Tara, that's nice. Uh, and uh, have you... Um, if you had to choose... <laughs> I'm starting to decide, because you ask me what they do, that's what comedians do. No comedian asks. If you had to choose between having a hand made out of ham or an armpit that just went sun cream, which would you choose? I'd choose the sun cream. Would you? Yeah. That's quite unusual. Do you, you, you want to reconsider? Because it's free ham. <laughs> free ham, but it's not, it doesn't matter if you're vegetarian, it's not, no animal has died. It's free, non-guilt ham. Can I give it away to people? You, well, no, you could eat it, because it's not ham. It's not from a pig, is it? Is your eat no, nothing's died. Is your uh, is your objection to eating meat that it's meat, or is your objection to eating meat that an animal has died? No animal has died. Yeah, uh, do I want to eat myself? Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> do you want to eat yourself, <laughs> Ian? Yeah. Have you tried? <laughs> you know it. You know it. Uh, so uh, anyway, look, we don't want to interview you. It's lovely to meet you. And I applaud your moral stance. I did it for 15 years as well before I realised that I was saving no animals. <laughs> <laughs> if everyone was vegetarian, there'd be no fucking animals. You're the mo you're worse than Hitler. So who was also vegetarian? <laughs> so um, you hate animals and want them all dead. So um, it's, it's a conundrum, isn't it? It's a weird conundrum when you think like that. So uh, look, we're going to introduce our final guest of the series, he's probably best known. I've sat down and I don't usually sit down for this and it feels weird. 
I'm going to do this from now on. It's, it's interesting, you know, 140 in, he suddenly realises a new way of doing stuff. Uh, he's probably best known of the, as the voice of Jacques Chirac uh, from Speaking Image. <laughs> what he's best known for. Uh, his second best known for that, he's best known for the thing that I said in the first time he was on. It's Peter Sam Finwich, ladies and gentlemen! He comes here! He is! Thank you. You're most welcome. Welcome back. Sit down. Pick up the microphone. You're sitting on your microphone. <laughs> there you go. That was pleasant, wasn't it? <laughs> Hello. <coughs> that was a good start, wasn't it? It was all right. Welcome back. It's nice to be back to having a tall man in the seat rather than a short person, which is what we had last week. So uh, it's good to be here. Do you, um, Jack Chirac, how's your... Can you still do Jack Chirac? Uh, you know, to, to, to be honest, uh, I, I hate when people bring that up. Uh, um, Jack Chirac. Yeah, it's pretty good because no one would know if it was right or wrong, would they? <laughs> that's a good one too. That's according to your IMDb. I didn't know you did Spitting Image, but you did the last series of Spitting Image, I guess, or is that not true? Oh, God, yeah. I did do the last series yeah. of Spitting Image, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was at a time when I didn't know anything about um, politics or current affairs or you know, what, just what people sounded like, really. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, it wasn't really, it, I, I mean, it was a great thing to be involved in, yeah. you know. It was, the, it was the very last series, but it was a bit disappointing. It had kind of, it had run out of, I mean, I was gonna say run out of steam, but I mean, there wasn't even any, you know, there, there were a, a couple of little water molecules <laughs> uh, in the air, but, um, uh, uh, and yeah, I, uh, I I just wasn't very good on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite. Uh, that was one of the first things you did, though. Presumably. It, yeah, it was. Um, it, 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 it was. Uh, I, you know, it was where I. I think it was one of the first things where I I, I started to get starstruck by. Like one of the reasons I wanted to get into comedy was to to kind of meet and work with all these people that had inspired me, like um, uh, Harry Enfield, you know? So I, 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 I met Harry on this show, you know? And uh, um, Steve Coogan I met briefly, you know? And, and, uh, I, 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 and I, was, I was probably like 22 or something, and uh, I, I was so excited, and I knew all the things these guys had done, and you know, they were, I was like, hi, hi, Steve. Uh, it's really, it's great, great to meet you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, it's nice to meet you. Uh, I'm only, uh, I'm just here for the uh, the first uh, episode, and you know, I, I, I was, I, I was just sort of, you know, doing it for, uh, 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 as a favour, really. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, nice to meet you, Phil. Uh, and, um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, and, and Harry, you know, is very, uh, you know, he's just so, he's really, you know, I mean, you know, Harry Enfield, he's, he's, just, he's so friendly and nice and uh, supportive and, you know, very shy and, you know, um, uh, uh, who else did I meet on that show? <laughs> Alistair, Alistair McGowan yeah. and, uh, uh, oh God, there was someone else, uh, John Lloyd, who, you know, do you, you know John Lloyd? <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> um, uh, who's like an incredibly influential uh, comedy producer and genius, and so it, yeah, it was it was it was, uh, it was good. And then watching it go out um, on on the TV um, in the days when we used to watch television, you know, we used to be in at a certain time to watch a program go out at a, at, at a certain time. Um, we, um, God, I sound old fashioned, don't I? What a <laughs> bore, what a fucking bore I am. Um, the, uh, it, it was, it was quite a disappointing experience, you know. <laughs> um, and then, uh, 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 <laughs> like watching a whole, a whole episode and like, just kind of not laughing, <laughs> thinking, oh God, I've ruined it, you know, but... <laughs> 
Um, I uh, think we probably wrote on that series, so it's probably our fault. If anything, I don't know. No, did we, you? We wrote. We we tried to write Spitting Injury, but it might have been a little bit earlier than that. But uh, we got like two sketches on, but yeah. they were never. You know. What were they? Can you well, The two sketches we got on were. Um, Think where I think this got on was Doc Cotton and Arnold Schwarzenegger as quite an unlikely pairing of cops. Right. Who initially dislike each other but then get on in the end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds funny. Yeah. That sounds good. Because uh, we realised that we that would get on because it was they we realised which puppets they would want to use and they liked it when two two puppets that wouldn't. Use. Yeah. So it was yeah. kind of a, a written backwards almost that one. And we did a sketch. A run, I wrote a running sketch about Mr. Kipling's the Mr. Kipling advert, but it was all about the friend of Mr. Kipling being obsessed with cakes and you know and I can't quite remember I, I, I used it in one of my shows in the end but it was literally just hands coming in and going oh Mr Kipling oh Mr Kipling gets annoyed with him coming around and eating all his cakes or something like that <laughs> it was a running it was a running joke but then none of the we wrote quite a lot of stuff but that was the only two bits they got on I think <laughs> you, no you just reminded me of a thing that me and Robert Popper did where we uh, I, we got an old Mr. Kipling advert. Yeah. I don't know, some of you uh, o older people might remember this one from like this, the, the, the 80s, uh, of two, uh, I noticed two little boys scrumping in my orchard. <laughs> and um, uh, he eventually, at the end of the advert, he takes them in and takes pity on them. He doesn't punish them and he, he gives them... Uh, uh, he gives them uh, s uh, some uh, of his Bramley apple pies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but we revoiced it and got the music, revoiced it, so he was kind of mean to them. <laughs> and I, I took them in and I gave them a good telling off and then I made them both eat soap. <laughs> and then that was the end of the advert. It was like, wow, imagine if that was actually on TV. That would be really strange. Um, yeah, <laughs> it just reminded me there's an advert on at the moment that I, that I think is very strange. But anyway, I'll, I'll try and remember that with okay. uh, my, my third uh, dormant brain. I'm just going to boot it up now. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, you've been doing a lot of this revoicing. Let's talk about the Trump thing. The, you do this, the Trump character. Uh, yes, uh, I've been doing these. Um, I don't know as, uh, as, uh, how many of you have seen these sassy Trump videos that I've been doing? Oh, right. Oh, great, great, great. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that you know, <laughs> fuck <it. laughs> I will say by the time this goes out, he is almost certainly dead. So that is, that's, so for yeah. people listening at home, we're not being disrespectful. He's alive as we're saying this. Yeah, yeah. If he's dead in your future, you know, I don't know if it's good or bad really, but. Yeah, way, no, I is. mean, you know, the, 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 when, you know, that night that, that he won the election, you know, the, the, then the, 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 there were messages the next day. There was this, this common thing of, well, you know, you're going to be doing that for the next four <laughs> years. And comedians are rejoicing because they've got this character that they can lampoon. And, oh, my God. And it's really not like... I, I, that's not the mood amongst comedians, no. I would say. You know, it, it's like... Um, you know, apart from the sheer terror that, that everybody is, is, is feeling. Can I just ask, actually, right, uh, like, honestly, are there any Trump supporters in this room? I'm not gonna... <laughs> no, 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 honestly, it just, you know, because we all have different opinions, and, and uh, is there anybody in this room that is a Trump supporter? Wow. <laughs> Okay. Well, I did a gig for some bankers the other day, and I yeah. and I said, "How do you feel about Trump?" And there was a table at the back of young men who went, "Hey," because I thought they would be upset about you know him destroying all economy wow. and money. So what you said? A group so, of so there are some fans of him in. I think like with it, in our country, the people can look at that and go, "You idiots in America voting for him," without looking at the idiot idiotic choices we've made in our own in our own country. So I think there'll be less Trump supporters in the UK. Yeah. I had yeah. lunch with a Trump supporter. I went I went to Indiana on holiday. Yeah. Uh, and we because we were going to visit some of my wife's family who live in proper Indiana Trump, and she had five Trump things out the front. They all you know they all had reasons for she's. She was, you know, a reasonable-ish person, but she, yeah, she, yeah. she blamed it. it was the Benghazi thing, wasn't it, where uh, the diplomat got 
killed and that she blamed Rock incorrectly, I think, blamed her. Uh, yeah, her it was all kind of based on, uh, you know, the, the, the way he, he the, 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 the story that, that they perpetuated wasn't, didn't seem to me to be true. I yeah. mean, it's... It, well, that was their tactic, wasn't it? It's the, it's the it's understanding if you just say a lie enough, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. So yeah. And, and, and politicians and used to think, well, at least I've got to skirt around the truth. Yeah, <laughs> at least have the decency <laughs> that, that, you know... That, that what I say has to be interpreted as a fact. Yeah, I mean, at least they... They, 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 they pretended, they said it in the style of, <laughs> of truth, you know, and, and, and there was a sort of tacit understanding. Okay, we know you're lying, and we know that the job of a politician is to smooth the edges, and you have your own agenda, you know. <laughs> and, um, but, but this is the first time that people have actually just blatantly lied and lied and lied, and this brute force bullying that... You know, d reminds me of reading 1984 when I was a teenager, and uh, and and that thing is it from that book where if you, you repeat a lie the, the, the uh, enough times it becomes the truth, oh, yeah, yeah, or I is that like a Hitler quote, or is it some <laughs> some other, or is it Paul Daniel? Maybe it's Paul Daniels. <laughs> If you repeat a lie. <laughs> I think it was Paul Daniels. Let's just say it was Paul Daniels. Yeah. It was Paul Daniels. It was Paul Daniels. If you repeat a lie a lot. Um, it was Paul Daniels. Uh, Paul not, Daniels. not a lot, a lot. Um, it was uh, Joseph Goebbels. Wow, it was Goebbels, up. right, okay. Um, that was just a voice from the back there. <laughs> from heaven came, that was me. Don't give Paul Daniels the credit. We're living in a post-truth world now, Goebbels. It's your fault. It was Joseph Goebbels. Um, but, uh, you know, so this is, this is sort of frightening. And, and, and uh, it, my, you know, my fear was uh, that, you know, because he went through various phases of being like, well, this is a joke, this is a publicity stunt, and three months later, <laughs> okay, well, all right, well, okay, the joke's kind of wearing a bit thin now, and then, oh, okay, no, people are sort of taking him seriously, and then, uh, and then it seemed like a month before that, I, I know this is boring, and we've all had all this exact same conversation, you know, but, like, I always thought, like, with him, because I really thought Hillary was going to win, I didn't realise how unpopular she was, and how, uh, how, like, resistant to the idea of a female president presidentess uh, <laughs> Americans uh, w w would be I mean people you know people and um, but 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 this this thing where Trump's kind of um, his bullying uh, uh, like the way he could he could lie about something and or say something totally outrageous and then replace it the next day with something equally as outrageous it somehow like pressed reset on anything he said and people didn't take it seriously and in the like ephemeral world of twitter and like this you, you know this like you know they used to call it like the 24 hour news cycle and it's it, it is that now but it's it means so much it's like a year isn't it it's in it, it's um if he was riding high that particular day, I thought, well, then, because it just comes down to, like, one day, a vote, you know, and, and he wasn't even in a particularly great place at that, at that time, you know, and, and, and it's terrifying, and I, I kind of understand why, why people feel like they've been forgotten um, and, and uh, et cetera, but, but I... I I, I, I get why people want change and and stuff. It's just I don't I don't understand how people can't see that he is just a huge con man. Yeah. I mean, he's like the most obvious, <laughs> the most obvious con man. It's like uh, uh, um, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it's difficult. To <laughs> well, I think in winning it does make it difficult, but it's difficult to satirise him. I'm sorry, we talked about this. 
few times, but because it's so extreme and what he says is... So you were literally just with the sassy trumpets, just you doing voicing what he has actually but, said. Yeah. So, in, so in a, a slightly it's, sassy it's way, a strange it's effective, situation where the only effective way that I've found that you can satirise him is by using his own actual <laughs> words, because any exaggeration, which is, you know, it's a staple of it's a it, it's a staple of, of satire and. Uh, you can't exaggerate what he does. You can't even, if like for instance, Veep, right? That show Veep. Um, if they had a character of Donald Trump uh, and he did all the things that, that, that he's done in the last week, say, <laughs> um, the, the, the scripts would be thrown out of the writer's room. It's, yeah. like, it's, like, it's like God's writing team has gone on strike and he's got like <laughs> interns to write and they're using all the most, the, all the cliches and they're saying, no, let's make him really, really, you know, <laughs> extreme and like, uh, and it's just, it's unbelievable. Um, but it's like, oh, there's been films where someone has risen to the presidency or a monkey has risen to the presidency <laughs> or whatever, where it's so ridiculous and the people can't see through it and yet this is, if people want to believe, I, I, I think it's interesting. I was, somewhat, I was comparing it; to, it was being compared to Christianity on, on uh, Twitter today. But with Christianity, it works. You know, it was people are saying if Jesus was here, he'd be pro guns, and he'd be, you know, kind of go, yeah. Uh, but uh, mm. but you know, if, with Jesus, because the Bible's a bit contradictory, and because he's a, just a, he's a bit of a cipher, you can project what you want onto him. So everyone thinks. Everyone who's a Christian likes Jesus because they see themselves in Jesus. And I mm. think it's a little bit true with Donald Trump as well, is that you, you hear what you want to hear. and you, If someone says two different things, you hear the bit you want to hear. And, and also, it's because he's a bit of a cipher, you can go, I think you can look at him and go, well, I'm a bit of an idiot, and he's a bit of an idiot, but I think I'd still be good as president. So, yeah. So, yeah. You know, and we all say stupid things, yeah. and we all say things that we regret, and we all say that... You know, we're sexually attracted to our daughters, and, you know, <laughs> things like that, that. That just a part of normal conversation. And so but then it feels like, you know, I wonder if he did it on purpose. It's a bit, you know, a lot of the of that kind of right wing and fascistic figures. They look foolish and they look comedic, and they, you know, and and people laugh at them. But I wonder whether that's a deliberate thing because all those people. It's so easy to latch on and mock him. So all the very people that the vote people who vote for Trump don't like. So mm. all those, you know, left wing. TV comedians are all taking the piss out of him and then it just looks like they're bullying him rather than the other way around. And yeah. so and so therefore you feel so you feel oh why is everyone having to go at him? He's all right really. Well so yeah. nice little but the person that the person that feels most sorry for him is Donald Trump and, <laughs> and, that, and that's I think his Achilles skin which is <laughs> Very thin. Yeah. You know. Well, do you uh, worry about that? Because you, I'm absolutely certain he will have seen your YouTube stuff. I absolutely, definitely he will have found it because he, he will Google himself and he will look on Twitter and he'll find everything and he'll, people will retweet yeah. something. And so if you go to America uh, three years into the presidency when he's established his anti comedy, you know, are you worried that there might be repercussions that down the line? <laughs> You know, I don't know really. I Even mean, if it's just like revenge, you know, petty revenge. I, I, I mean, okay. So when I first started di revoicing those those Trump things, I first gave him like this very sophisticated British uh, educated voice when he was in this interview, just being a total idiot and trying to sound clever, you know. And and uh, and that was that was quite amusing. I did that a couple of times. And then I did this one about. Uh, where I, because I thought he looked a bit like um, that guy uh, who plays Brick Top in the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the uh, you know, the Lock Stock films, that brilliant actor, Alan, Alan Ford. Alan Ford, yeah, right. And um, he, uh, so, and he was talking about, I'm going to hit Hillary. <laughs> I'm going to hit her so hard, and Bill, I'm going to hit him as well. <laughs> Uh, and this was all his words, right? And it was all, and I, and you know, for me, I just made the very superficial uh, connection that he looked like this guy, and I thought that would be funny. And it was only when I'd finished, um, like, dobbing over this this bit that was only like a minute long, and I watched it back, and I felt kind of a bit stupid because I thought, wow, this is like, this is his like 
this is his true message, the true thing that he's getting across. Is, is he actually really clever, or is this like his subconscious, you know, projecting this thing? Anyway, uh, but so I, I did that one, and that one was kind of funny, and uh, but also it made you pay attention to his words because you get, you get so desensitized to what he says. You know, every fucking day he says something that is that for any other presidential candidate would have finished their campaign, yeah. you know. In, in but that's a bit, usually a politician would go, oh, sorry, I said this thing and I'm withdrawing. But to actually go, nope, no, I'm not going to go, I'm yeah. not withdrawing. He doesn't, yeah, or he denies he says it or he doesn't comment about it at all because he's, you know. <laughs> anyway, then I, and then I hit upon this thing of uh, this... You know, the it was like watching this video with the sound down. It was like, wow, this guy is the campus guy. <laughs> I honestly, it's like, like, um, God, I can't even describe how, like, not only camp, but so bitchy and so, uh, so catty and so, and the more I saw it, it was like, uh, you know. There was like, the, I remember seeing one where he is in Kentucky and he's talking to uh, this audience that are predominantly uh, coal miners and their industry is, is under threat and he's going to bring back uh, jobs to those people, he says. And, um, and so, <laughs> so he's got all these, you see all these big like coal miners like sitting behind him and they're all like big boulders of men you know and uh and and he's going on this riff about uh oh oh yeah he comes on with a, a miner's helmet right and he has a little dance in a miner's helmet right <laughs> and he takes it off and then uh and then he starts and i'll do this this is you know what he sounds like uh but uh, this was my sassy trump version and he's like God, I just, just, oh, this helmet's ruined my hair. I've just used hairspray. You know, hairspray these days is so, I mean, it used to be, you know, psh, psh, and it would come out in a spray, and now you got the pump, psh, psh, you know, and because of the ozone, or, and my apartment is, it's totally concealed. It's concealed, right, he gets the word wrong. Uh, how does that affect the ozone? Like, I want the old, you know. So anyway, so these guys, right, sitting behind him, he's like talking about hairspray for the first like 10 seconds, and they're going, oh, it's, oh here's pretty good. <laughs> and then you can kind of see their faces like fade, like, as he's, wow, he's been talking about hairspray for two minutes now. <laughs> You know, and, and um, so, so uh, and people had said to me in the, in the comments on YouTube, you know, um, occasionally they say, oh, bring back Cockney Trump and do this other one. And, and I like doing that one because, first of all, he's, you know, it, I feel like it's his true, <laughs> it's, it's, his, it's his true um, spirit coming yeah, yeah. through, you know. And, uh, and also, it's the one that if he has seen any of these things, it's the one that will really annoy him. <laughs> it's the one that, you know, and I feel like, for me, I, I, I feel like uh, if my, my ambition uh, before I get sent to Guantanamo or, <laughs> you know, or uh, Trump complex uh, Cuba, um, the, the, uh, what, I, what I would love is for him to publicly uh, denounce what I've been doing and, and the, like preferably on video so then I can <laughs> dub that video. How dare he say that <laughs> I'm cap? It's disgusting. <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, I know, I, I, but, 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 you know, I, I enjoy doing it because it, you know, just as I say, it's like, it's a, it's a weird thing of putting a layer upon something that makes the, that makes it clearer. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, what's interesting. Is, I think because every now and again you look and you think, 
oh, well, hold on, well, he's, he's looped this bit or he's changed it. You know, he's, you're changing the words. Then you go, God, no, he's not. He's not changing anything. No, this happened yeah. like this and it was stated like this, had this repetition and all this yeah. prevaricating in it. It's kind of insane. It's like, it really does, you know, not that, I mean, not that, there's nothing that you can do to make people, I think, apart from letting him rule for four years and then people might go, Oh yeah, that was probably a mistake. <laughs> In hindsight, uh, 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 and and also, but it's rare, isn't it? It's rare to see something politically happen and sort of be sure that it's a massive error. And both yeah. with both with and Brexit is more arguable, I think, than Trump. But even so, they've both got like this little time period before they happen, where you're sitting there going, I can't believe this is going to happen, and we could could we stop it happening? And yet we're not we're not going to stop happening because of democracy. <laughs> Because yeah. democracy is so sacrosanct that we can't even go, oh, hold on, why don't we just have a first vote and then have a little think about it and then see how it's going and then mm. the sec- we have a second one and that's the one that counts. Yeah, it's the real one. Uh, <laughs> best of three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because like, it's both of them are kind of, you, you can see things going wrong and wrong and wrong and going, are we literally just going to sit back and let that happen? We are, though. We're going to sit back and let uh, both of them happen. Yeah, I suppose. But then, you know, I don't know. It calls... You know, I don't want to get too political. By the way, I've never understood anything about pol- uh. ab- about politics, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, and I've really had no interest in it. And it's it's uh, like 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 um, you know, I mentioned Armando's show and the, you know um, the thick of it. You know, like for instance, I, uh, I I've never really managed to get into that because I don't. I don't understand the, 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 the context of it. You really need to know a lot about politics. Sure. In fact, that's right, I auditioned for a role in the In the Loop, uh, the, the film, yeah? Of, is that what it was called, yeah. In the Loop? And, um, and I had to kind of improvise. <laughs> I had to improvise this scene. I was told basically what it was. Okay, look, you're trying to get this policy through. Basically, you're a policy wonk, right? And I was thinking, I don't know what that is. I don't know what. Okay, explain what is what is anything, you know? <laughs> and um, and it's just been a, a huge blind spot for me. But you know, I think one thing, at least for me, and I think for a lot of people in the world, it's it's taught me. A, I've learned a lot about politics um this uh this year you know with brexit and and look as you say you know with you know it was a similar feeling of like in london you know and the people that i know and stuff you know we were all just kind of so shocked and and uh but but as you say at least there is there is a reasonable argument for it you know i mean it seems clear to me that that it's it's a huge disadvantage for us leaving the EU. But like, uh, like how many people here uh, voted to <laughs> voted to um, leave? The, do you know? I, it, do you know? It doesn't even matter. I can't see. Any, I can't see anything. There will be some in here, but like, uh, but again, it's not. It's sort of. It, my audience is probably going to be a l- little bit less representative yeah. than uh, uh, okay than a national poll. Yeah, but, but including all the stupid people, right? So that's that's <laughs> this is the creme de la creme. But but but, <laughs> but, but, but nevertheless, it's it's uh, there is there is a, 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 a reasonable okay the, the, there is a reasonable argument to leave and there's. You know, uh, and but with Trump, you know, people are. Th- that's not. It's not reasonable at all, <laughs> even for those people who who feel forgotten and are just living in these Walmart places and earning shitter and shitter money and uh, to, to 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 vote for this guy. Like every piece of evidence about this guy, <laughs> just you know, I mean. It's just, it's 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 mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. Well, it's all. I mean, you know, and he's in the most powerful position in the world. 
Well, see, what I'm amazed about is that nobody in America seems bothered about the rush, you know, the the, ba- the Russian backing, the fact that Russia has helped him get into power, yeah, uh, the fact yeah. that he owes loads of money to, to different banks around the world, who yeah, he's now yeah, going to yeah. be in charge of, and is clearly, you know, there's there's a at least a conflict of interest, however he chooses to address that, but it feels like he wants to just do the best for Donald Trump, which is, I, uh, uh, which is. His, yeah, well, <laughs> making as much money as he can. But I'm amazed, you know, in America 20 years ago, if you'd said, this guy's, the Russians are behind this guy, yeah. people would have gone ape shit. And so the, the hardcore American, we're American and let's make America great again people are allowing Russia to have influence, so, uh, so much influence that it might make America no longer the greatest power in the world. Uh, probably make China the be- greatest power in the world. Yeah. I, I, um, there was, there was a, one video that I did where it, that George Stephanopoulos from CBS was interviewing Trump about, uh, and he was being very reasonable, and he kept pressing him on this. He said, do you have a relationship with Putin? You, and Trump's like, I, I have no relationship with Putin. I don't. I, 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 I've never even met Putin, right? And like, you know, so that's my overdub voice, but like, you can see in his eyes, it's, it like brings out like, oh, he's totally lying and just making this up, you know? And he's, and, you know, I, I mean, please check this. It's my favorite one of the whole thing because it like, it, it shows how, first of all, how he lies, also how he, because uh, he's such a king of bullshit, he can just, he, he, he's totally in the second, you know? He's, he's like, he's got some kind of like reptilian uh, sense of, of survival and, and making these quick decisions and not thinking about any consequences, you know? And, and George Stephanopoulos says, you know, well, you, you know, you have said before that you have had a relationship with Putin in the past. Well, what do you mean by a relationship? I mean, we didn't go hiking together. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't spend, uh, we didn't go fishing together. We didn't spend, and it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And, and uh, I mean, look, it's, uh, as I say, you know, it's, it's, it, it's like we've all had all of these conversations like s- so much, so, I, you know, I won't go on about it. Uh, too much, just for another about 50, 55 minutes. <laughs> it's fine, we've got, all, we've got all night, it's the last one. Um, um, I mean, it's great, it, it, it's interesting, I'm just not, yeah, I think you're right that it's, for, for, from a comedian's point of view, it's, it's sort of not satirizable because it's too... Yeah, like, like the, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen any of the, uh, the SNL sketches with Alec Baldwin uh, doing him, and he does write uh, a pretty great Donald Trump impression, but it's that thing of like you can't you can't exaggerate him you can't because it's just it's not it's it's kind of he's gone way beyond that threshold that any exaggeration is is just superfluous it just dilutes it even uh uh and 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 also interestingly right for somebody with such a distinctive voice as Donald Trump from uh, somebody who does impersonations, he's actually really difficult to to do. Right. Yeah, he's di- you know he's he, he's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> can anybody do a Donald Trump impression? <laughs> Amanda did a quite good one in, in the end yeah, in the podcast, but yeah, it's uh, it is it's a tricky one. Uh, well, let's talk about something. Well, it's, it's, it's similarly on the internet. A, a lot. Well, a lot of it. I was spending all. I got trapped in a Brian Butterfield loop. Oh, uh, this oh. afternoon, which was very enjoyable. I mean, oh, it's the way thanks, to man. it's you. the way to enjoy it. It's just to let it. You, know, you put one on, and then they just keep coming. And there's so many of them, oh. and they're so and they get funnier. We last time we were on, we talked about uh, Limmy and Falconoof. It's the same sort of thing. Where oh, did we? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but it's yeah, that right. same sort. Of, the, it comes on, and it's the same idea, but it, it keeps on changing and exploring and. Oh, are you doing more man. with? You, there was, I hear there was a rumor of doing a TV show. But is that yeah, happen? well, we we we've been trying to do a TV show for for years actually, and um, we we this year we 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 got commissioned by the BBC to write two scripts of a uh, of a sitcom, a, a Brian Butterfield sitcom that is the premise of which is he is in uh, he's in an office. Like, if you've seen any of the sketches, you know his office is just like looks like it's been ransacked by uh, b- by um, the uh, special branch, you know. And and uh, so he's in this office, and each week he's got like a different business 
thing that he's that he's doing, and that's what each episode revolves around. We d and we did this we, we, we did this read through. It was like a so they didn't give it a pilot. They gave it a uh, it's like a, I don't know what what you it's all, it's almost like a radio play. You do it on a stage, and we did it in front of like a hundred people. I got into all the Brian prosthetics, and you know it takes like four hours, you know, and it's really good fun, you know. Um, and uh, and we and we did this thing. So this is Brian uh, is is the boss, and then he has uh, Alison Stedman was his his secretary, who's been with him for years and years and years, who's secretly in love with him, <laughs> uh, and he is with her, but he just doesn't know it. And um, uh, and then you know John Thompson was wow, in it, brilliant. and who else? Oh, um, Jamie Dimitriou. Do you know Jamie oh, yeah, Dimitriou? Yeah, Oh, he's so in. funny, yeah, so yeah. funny, and and Ross Lee. Do you know Ross Lee? Um, Lee Ross, I know from not, no, 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 no. It's a different person okay. with a different name. <laughs> um, uh, I like Lee Ross. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> me too. I'm a big fan of him. I, I really, I genuinely think he's fucking brilliant. He is, I yeah. love watching anything he's in. But I don't know Ross Lee. Uh, Ross Lee. Does anyone know Ross Lee? Rusty Lee is it? I know Rusty, Rusty Lee. Lee. <laughs> Uh, again, a different person. Uh, the the uh, Ross Lee, uh, he is a very, uh, he's a very, he's like an androgynous, very skinny uh, guy. He used to present this show on. Uh, he's got this very particular voice that's uh, that's high pitched, and um, he used to do this show called Burn Bag. Burn Bag. That was like a children's. It was like a children's show. He's a bit like sort of Kenny Everett. And uh, he's like someone who's like a perpetual child. If you don't know Ross Lee... Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah. Oh, he did... <laughs> he, uh, he also did a, uh, a pranks show that was on Sky about three or four years ago that Robert Popper uh, produced this, this pilot of um, that you can probably still find somewhere. Oh, my God, it's one of the funniest things, right? Because he's like this little skinny guy, right? And he does this hidden camera thing where he's... Uh, uh, and he explains what the thing is to camera before. So he goes, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in this minicab and I'm going to get him to drive to my house and then I'm not going to come out for five minutes and see what he does, right? So, OK, just here, please, at this cul-de-sac here. Thank you. And this, like, minicab driver, you know, somewhere in, like, Leeds... All right, mate, all right, you know, and he's waiting and he's waiting and, and Ross goes inside, right, <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get disguised as my own mother <laughs> and because he's so, he's got these really, he's so skinny, he's got these fine, he's actually quite beautiful looking in a, in a sort of weird way and he puts this grey wig on and uh, and this dress like really quickly, and this guy gets tired of waiting. He comes up to the door. Uh, excuse me, uh, the this, this lad just uh, dropped off, and he hasn't paid me. Oh, that'll be our Ross. Oh, he's always doing that. Hang on, Ross, Ross. Oh, just hang on a minute. I'll I'll go and see if I can find him. And then he comes back out. And uh, so the guy's still waiting at the door. And then Ross then proceeds to change into, like, his brother, his dad. <laughs> and this guy still just doesn't know what's going on. It's, it's, just, it's just absolutely, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, so anyway, you should check it out. Ross Lee is great. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, so we did this, we did this uh, pilot, uh, sitcom pilot, uh, Read through thing, and it went really well. And it's it, it's the one thing that I've been involved in where I th where I thought this, I think people would like this, right? It's like you know what it's like when you you have something that you've written or that you're in, or oh, I've got a part in a film, maybe I'll be a star next year, you know? <laughs> and it just you know it you get you, you kind of temper your um, enthusiasm, you know? But like for this, I really. It seems to really kind of connect with people. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, anyway, we did this thing in January this year, and then, uh, uh, and then the BBC waited about five months, and then we got an email saying, oh, the BBC have turned it down, and we were like, oh, God. But anyway, um, <laughs> it might be uh, happening again now. I, yes. I, I think what, what's, what's going to... 
the BBC, I think, are playing a long game where I think in about 40 years they're going to commission it in order <laughs> primarily to save money on uh, prosthetics. <laughs> um, by which time I, I, they will be unnecessary. I might even have to lose some weight. Um, but He's um, quite a Donald Trumpish character himself in a way, and this is sort of bullshitting trying everything, every business he can do, uh, yeah. allowing bad... Te I love the kind of there's bad testimony in it. Basically, every, every of the, all the sketches are him trying to set up a different business yes. of those kind of shystery businesses that you know, well, aren't a million miles away from what Donald Trump's doing. Well, I think that that's the difference, is that he genuinely thinks he's like a visionary and some of his ideas are actually quite... Uh, they're, they're quite good, you know, and... Um, uh, he, he just doesn't have the, he just doesn't have the acumen to kind of take the, the, the get the full worth out of these things. But he he's got a conscience, and what he wants to do is help people. Where and it's never it's never about selfishness. No, no. He do, he's not selfish at no. all, and he's, um, and I think uh, uh, yeah. So that's where the the, the difference is Donald Trump, and I think just generally like. This other thing, I know, like politics and everything, but like, just, just like, I, I, I feel like this distinction between like, that you, you, you see with like Democrats and Republicans and right wing and left wing and whatever, it's like really, it, it, I, I think we should kind of be doing away with these things, you know, because the people have different opinions about different things and. Uh, you know, um, I think I I, I, I I mean I think generally like the, this this Donald Trumpy movement uh, and, and people like Ann Coulter, right? Do you know Ann Coulter, this American yeah. journalist who's uh, she's just like really mean <coughs> and unkind and like it's just horrible. Like guy Steve Bannon, mm. he's fucking horrible. It's just <laughs> like. The, these people just shouldn't be called right, but they should be called horrible people. <laughs> They're just not kind, you know. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, there are people who you would describe as like, um, I don't know, whatever, Republicans or capitalists or whatever, but like who are kind and care about people and want to help people, you know. And then there are people who are just like really super selfish and... Um, Anyway, this is a funny <laughs> interview, isn't it? It's all right. It's all good. Um, uh, well, there's a lot. I mean, there's lots. Of I want to ask you this because I've been trying to get. Good, it, it worked in a little brief period, and we haven't had good stories. Have you met Brian Blessed? Uh, no, oh. I haven't. I haven't met Brian Blessed, but a friend of mine, uh, Tim Kirkby, who's a brilliant director, oh, yes. who directed. Uh, look around you, director. Look around you, and 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 Tim's like he, he's doing all kinds of stuff. In fact, Tim recently did. Um, uh, he, Tim directed the pilot of Fleabag, which I only just recently saw, oh, which yes, I loved. Yeah. And um, but Tim remembers going to, to. He was shooting something, and they were. <laughs> they, were they, they were shooting something. I think maybe it was like the Lake District or something, and. Uh, uh, they were uh, he, uh, having a drink in the bar in this little hotel they were staying in. It was like 10 o'clock, and, and Brian Bliss, right, I'm off to my bed. Um, I'm going to uh, climb the, um, whatever the local mountain is, Ben Nevis, tomorrow morning, before we start shooting. But you've got a <laughs> 7 o'clock call. Yes, I know that. You know, I know it's not a very good Brian Blessed impression, but anyway. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> So, you know, and then he turns up on set, seven o'clock, people have forgotten about it, you know, and he's getting in costume. And like, you know, how was your, uh, you went up Ben Nevis this morning? Yes, oh, it was marvelous, it was amazing. Anyway, basically, he didn't, and he just <laughs> lied. He just lied. Um, uh, and, uh, and then there was this, the other thing that I know about Brian Blessed, I mean, he seems like, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, he's, he seems like a pretty, you know, he's a, he's, a, the world would be an inch more, uh, less, in more, less interesting <laughs> place. I hate using cliches like that. I avoid them like the plague. <laughs> um, but um, the, uh, but 
so I don't know anything about him, but he seems pretty funny and entertaining, yeah. you know. And he did this he, this one clip just really is has stuck in my mind far more than it should. But I I don't know. It's on YouTube. It's it's, it's when he used to do this uh, early morning BBC hospital show. <laughs> There's a live. From uh, the the uh, whatever that hospital is in uh, Waterloo, that oh, yes, uh, Thomas St Thomas's. Yes, <laughs> yes. So the, the BBC commissioners thought, should we get to present this program? About this? <laughs> what about Brian Blessed? <laughs> Fucking yes. <laughs> and and, and uh, so there's this bit, and it's all live. It's all morning television. So it's got all that, you know. Uh, sort of something, you know, they're expecting something to happen and it doesn't, there's a little bit of dead air and somebody's got a foot injury and Brian Blessed says, you know, I've got a very unusual foot. Has anybody seen this clip? <laughs> and someone says, well, what do you mean? Well, I, it was, uh, I think, say, for instance, I was, I was run over by a car when I was 22 and, and uh, look, I'll show you. And he takes his, his shoe off and his foot, right, is about like, is about like that big. <laughs> and like, it looks like a sort of, like some giant's hand is trapped in there. <laughs> and, that, and that has been sort of, has been like, also has been like deep fried in a, <laughs> in a chip shop. It's like the most weird, it's like really a thing you do not expect to see at that moment. <laughs> And he's quite proud of it. I mean, look at that. Oh, God. This, uh, this, uh, this is a size 11. This is a size 44. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're my two little Brian, <coughs> Brian Blessed yeah, they're uh, good. anecdotes. They're always good value. I'm hoping he'll be a guest on the next series. We got, we've, I've been in touch with his agent. We couldn't get him this series, but hopefully next series. Hope by which we'll have a, a big, a lot of stories about him. Do you ever worry that you don't have a flexible and customizable registration system for venues and events that want to take part in festivals? <laughs> that have ever been a concern of yours? How would, would you like a suite of tools to help festival managers minister their events? The tools ranging from brochure production, box office integration, and website driving to front of house displays, press management, contract generation, and automated settlements. I mean, like, it would be good if it was like a worldwide network of festivals, venues, producers and performers designed mm. to expose shows to mm. the best places to perform and allow festivals to find their best work, do you think? Because <laughs> I think if you do, you should try uh, Eventatron. I think be, they would be, that be... I think that will solve your problems, your worries you've been having. Eventatron, they're very good um, at doing festival registration and management they, system. They are very good. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know, you know it's just, it's a big robot, yeah? Right. It's a Ventatron beta, an introduction to event, event, Ventatron. And Ventatron, he's a robot, but he transforms into a massive marquee. <laughs> with lighting and... Um, I, mean, I don't know why the man who runs a Ventatron thought this would be a good... <laughs> <laughs> good platform for uh, advertising, but there might be quite a few festival organisers out there. Thinking, so hang on, yeah. how did you get? Was that a, was that a question posed to me? <laughs> yeah, no, it's no. Uh, I've, I've slipped in a product placement. Clever, I've cleverly ah, slipped it in. I see. I cleverly slipped yeah. it in so it sounded like Ventatron. It was, it's good and it's taking off faster than uh, Chris expected. The man who does it. Well, well, good, good, good. One for of the you, reasons Chris. I've been crap at getting back to you is I'm currently swanning around Canada and the US, showing it to interested folks. All right, fuck off, Chris. So, <laughs> yeah, gone. He's kind of currently swanning gone. around. He's cut in Canada and America. He's gonna uh, make millions off of it. He could have wow. given us more than two hundred and fifty okay. fucking quid, couldn't you? Then if it's that's anyway, Venter Trombita is uh, the, if that's what you want. If you're saying uh, if you're thinking of setting up a festival, that's what you is want. Is this is this your company? No. No. I just he looked like a kind of bloke who might it be is interested. now. <laughs> Richard, tell him. <laughs> it's yours. Uh, if you had to be in a human centipede with two other people, mm. and you're in the middle, but you can choose the other two people, which two people would you choose to be in a human centipede with? Okay. So you're in the middle. Let's see. Wow, what a question. Okay. Who's got the tastiest excrement? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ah, okay. Well, you know, um, I suppose the front 
of the... Um, first of all, right, yeah. if I was to agree to do this, yeah. it would, uh, I couldn't go like the full horrific human centipede. I'd have to... Like, it would have to be like a pantomime human centipede. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's the same, but like we're in a costume, you know. <laughs> Uh, so at the front, who would it be? Um, oh, God. <sighs> God. What a question. <laughs> I mean, and I've been asked this so many times. <laughs> I would say... Um, oh, God. But Donald Trump. Because you know what? If you're going to do that... You might as well just do it, you know? Just just make it as bad as yeah. possible. Um, and then behind yeah. me... Um, oh, God. I don't know. I mean... I mean now they're getting your shit and Donald Trump shit. Yeah, yeah. Stop. I mean, that is bad. I it was think, all right when it was just yours. Do you know what? I think, to be fair, what I would do, right, is I would... I would probably have like a competition and the proceeds would go to charity right. so, so like everybody would get a fair chance <laughs> of uh, you know and a benefit you know Oxfam yeah. or um, so you're going to auction it off to someone yeah okay yeah not sure it would raise that much money but you know you never know <laughs> have you ever had an altercation with a shepherd mm, oh mm, <laughs> no okay. uh, n uh, no I uh, I haven't. Have I? <laughs> <laughs> you might um, not know, because he might be just on his day off. <laughs> I don't know whether this... Fucking hell, I've only just remembered this. I don't know whether this counts as an altercation, but I was... When I was ten, I was sexually abused by a shepherd. <laughs> Now that's... A, you know, I, I wasn't. And I, you shouldn't joke about things like that, you know. Um, uh, no. The answer's no. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a shepherd. Um, I, I've been looking at. <laughs> I've been looking at uh, YouGov pages. YouGov has this thing where you can look yourself up on YouGov or look up a celebrity or a product and find out what their fans like. Uh, the only thing I want to say about <laughs> your fans, your fans on social media, follow a variety of people you'd expect. I think like Robert Popper and you know that kind of thing. Uh, they also follow Andy Peters. <laughs> Is there a reason for why your fans would follow Andy Peters? Uh, God, I don't know, really. Have you got any connection with Andy Peters? Um, my connection with Andy Peters... I mean, he'd be a good person to have at the front of a human centipede. <laughs> I imagine his excrement is delicious. <laughs> he'd be quite popular. <laughs> it, 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 they might even insist on it being a human millipede. <laughs> um, the uh, Andy Peters. Uh, all, all I really know Andy Peters from is the uh, Toy Story Two. Uh, it's 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 the only doff moment of Toy Story <laughs> Two, which is which is a, a, a classic film in every respect. And as part of the uh, whatever it was that the, the sort of youth show that was on possibly it was T4 or the yeah yeah the the, the predecessor to that um uh which may have been called T5 I I, I don't know but um uh oh, that was a good joke <laughs> 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 um, um he went uh, and did a visit to Pixar and showed them all recording the sound and stuff and they said hey why don't you uh you want to record a line of dialogue and and there's a bit in the uh I, I, I think it's where all the lo the luggage is getting sorted behind the scenes in the at the airport, and 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 he says some line, and suddenly it's like the whole film just comes to <laughs> stop. And it's only a couple of seconds long, but um, yeah. anyway. But thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably in America, they probably they sometimes do that, don't they? Show the cartoons and they change the people to oh, local celebrities. So maybe sometimes. They, maybe yeah. they did that in each place so they could do a little bit in the uh, making of film. Uh, yeah, I, I think Pixar are kind of too classy to do that. Right. I, think, I think, but like, uh, but then others definitely do. Yeah. Like I think Jeremy Clarkson was in 
Cars, the film. <laughs> the film Cars. And I think maybe he wasn't. He probably would be now, though, wouldn't he? Um, the, 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 there, was, there was a funny thing about uh, that Robert Popper was saying about Cars that really makes me laugh. I'm a big Pixar fan, but I find Cars isn't like my favourite one. I think it's a bit of a bit of a weird one. And um, Robert was talking about the the logic of it. He didn't talk about this on your. I don't think so. He, so okay, you have these anthropomorphic cars, right? And they have where their windshields are, eyes, and their grills and mouths, and they live in this world that's kind of. Uh, they do human things, but there are lots of roads, and everything's very car-based, you know. And um, and and Robert was was sort of <laughs> it was just thought thought of this really funny image of like, well, what is inside these cars? <laughs> and uh, and then he thought, imagine if you opened a car door. And then just like a, a rotting skeleton of a human <laughs> just lolled out and clattered to the floor. I always thought that was funny, just imagining them all with corpses of, you know, some weird, like, um, nuclear event had mutated. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I often think of that, yeah. and, and, and it makes me laugh. What is, I like, this is almost connected. What is your, uh, what do you think is the worst Adam Sandler film? Uh, okay. do, you watch, do you watch Adam Sandler films? I, I, I've seen some Adam Sandler films. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know. Have you been in any of? You've not been in any of the Adam Sandler. Films? No, I've never. I've never met him. Apparently, he's a very nice man. Yeah. Everybody says that he's a very nice man, and uh, uh, and I think I think he's funny when I've seen him on uh, you know doing little bits on chat the little ukulele thing. Yeah. Have you ever seen him do that where he does the little songs with the ukulele in like a kind of childish, high pitched voice? Yes, I remember I seeing it. He started doing it. I thought, oh, this is rubbish, and it was actually brilliant. <laughs> you know? But um, uh, there was this. Uh, I walked past a few months ago. There's a the, the, there's a uh, a shoe and key repair shop um, in uh, I think like Cricklewood or somewhere that uh, is this is this little this little place and they had this poster up for this Adam Sandler film called I think it's called The Cobbler. I think it is. Please. <laughs> You've chosen my best one as well. That's my that's my best worst one. So. <laughs> and it was in the sh it was in the window of this um, of this little shoe repair a, a cobbler's you know yeah and I I stopped and stared at it and I thought I really was like I don't know what this is I don't know is this a real film or has the owner of the cobbler's shop got like a 22 year old nephew who's mocked up this thing. <laughs> Uh, about like as if Adam Sandler was in a shop uh, was a cobbler in a shop and that he had he could make magic shoes right <laughs> because the poster looked just like wonky and wrong you know and then I, I walked off deciding no that's it it's his nephew has done that and it's a really sweet thing and I should stop being so cynical about the world and then I looked it up on IMDb uh, <laughs> later that day, and uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. it's on Netflix if you want to watch it. Is it? Yeah. Um, I really recommend it. I don't want to tell you too much about it. A, because I've talked about it quite a lot of length, and B, I think you have to discover it yourself. It's like it's right. like the Danny Dyer. Who do you think you are? <laughs> but it's sort of the opposite of that. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. Danny Dyer's. Who do you think no, you yeah, are? Don't, I'll, I'll I'll give you a link to that as well. Uh, have you, have you, you could, you should, have you not done Who Do You Think You Are? You know the programme, Who Do You Think You Are? Uh, who do, who do it's you about think the, you are? It's about the family trees going back into the... Yeah, I don't know, really. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think it sort of... It looks to me like um, it's got that same kind of feeling as like Antiques Roadshow, where <laughs> they pretend to be... Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, I think. Well, the Danny Dye one proves that it's, uh, it's well, genuine. What happens in that? Oh, look, well, I know I you. I don't want to tell you. About, oh, okay, oh okay, fuck, okay. it's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely... It'll cheer you up. It's the best thing that's happened in 2016. It, probably, <laughs> it was probably recorded in 2015, though, if we're honest, so that's the reason. 
let's go on. Let's move on. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I was, I, 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 you've been you've been in some bad films as well, so let's talk about those. Uh, so, because we talked about your good films before, and there's been some good ones. Pudsey the dog, the movie. How did that go down? I've not seen it. Uh, you've not seen it, and no. you're criticising. Yeah, I'm right. just, I'm just, oh. I've just okay. guessed it's bad. Um, you know what? It's actually, uh, it, uh, oh, I haven't seen it. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't, you didn't pay to go to the premiere of Pudsey the Dog the movie like you did with uh, the Phantom <laughs> Menace. Um, I mean, I always thought that that whole thing with okay, so the dog wins the contest on the TV, but it's called Pudsey, and like Pudsey is the bear with the eye injury. Um, and why would you? I, I, there were suddenly two podsies. Yeah, that and, was and, weird. And that I didn't like. No. I, 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 I thought she could have thought of a more original name for the. <laughs> Still, we're in the film, though. You could have. Yeah, you yeah, could have yeah I know. I know. I, until I, they changed the name of the dog. Well, I wrote a long scene in which my character made this very point, but I don't think it made the. <laughs> Final cut. I haven't seen the film, but you know, I, I didn't think. To be honest, I've been in. I've been in worse stuff than that. <laughs> honestly, I mean, you know. What is the worst uh, Peter Sarafinovich film? Oh, God. Run, um, fat boy, run. That's not bad. It's it's got some. It, it is. It is bad. Is is it bad? It's bad because it's good. It's not. It's not as bad as the cobbler. So it's you know. Um, but it's bad. It's worse as a result. Uh, it's badder. Uh, no. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I thought that was kind of... <laughs> I'm getting all defensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to go all Steve Merchant now. This is it. I've read. <laughs> but, 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 but also, you know, I don't want to... That's such a nice time, I'm sorry. I, 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 don't want to, I don't want to diss the other... You know, I was such a minor part of that uh, film. And, yeah. like, you know... I've got a running joke. It's only my, it's only my running joke. About. I, oh, okay. I did criticise it to Simon Pegg's face, to be fair, and he took it quite well. Did he? Yeah, I was surprised. I, and that was the same day that I talked to Stephen Merchant. I think that, that encouraged me. <laughs> the fact so hang on, that I missed that. Simon, what, was, what happened well, to Stephen two, Merchant? I did two podcasts on the same day, the first with uh, Simon and the second with uh, Stephen Merchant. And I think the fact that Simon Pegg didn't mind me. I was really worried before I'm going, dare I mention Run, right. Boy, Run? Because I've been, yeah, I think yeah, I've yeah. mentioned it before, not liking uh -huh. it. It's mainly because I'd written a similar thing and that's, so it's, there's ah, like a, there's a, there's a, there's a story right, right, to right, it. Right, so right, I'm right, it's right. not that bad, but it's pretty bad. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then, so I, I was emboldened to be a bit rude to Stephen so Merchant. What, <laughs> so what did you ask him then? No, it was, I just, it was nothing, that's not, it was, it was the last one in the series and I always just fuck it up, just at the end, I think I've done a good thing and let's fuck it up at the end. I mean, it, it would be, you, you know, I, 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 uh, I think S Stephen is, as you know, he's a very sweet, he is, yeah. he's a sweet heart, you know, and, uh, uh, and but it, you know, if you were to ask Ricky Gervais that question, <laughs> I mean, that would be a kind of, you know, he would he 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 he, he doesn't like people criticizing uh, anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about. I'm very. You're, there's so many things that are very exciting that you've done. You Parks and Recreation, which you, it was, it must have been amazing to be in that. Yeah, it was. It was. It was lovely. I mean, I just. A little bit in it. I did two episodes, and and uh, it was uh, yeah, it was just, you know, and, and working with like, you know, there's like eight core people in the cast who are all like fucking just so funny. Everyone's really nice as well. Right, Everyone's, yeah. and I think sometimes you find that with like a big ensemble that occasionally it doesn't happen if there's like one person who's like the 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 queen um, ant or yeah. whatever the expression <laughs> is, but the, but but I, 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 I think that's the um, expression. It's the next Adam Sandler film. <laughs> <laughs> he turns into a homosexual ant, <laughs> and it's sort of a lot of him going ooh ooh, but then he's got a good friend who's gay, and it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and then go oh don't don't bump me up my little clo <laughs> ant cloaca hole. And but uh, hey, but hey, I, I, let's all be accepting of each other. And then, and then, uh, halfway through the film, the the, the Queen Ant 
finds out that it is actually second in line to the British throne. <laughs> and that's where the, the rest of it yeah. takes place in uh, London. Um, the, the, um, Could be the actual aunt of uh, the Queen as well. <laughs> the and that's Queen's how, that's aunt. All the, it's a, uh, by coincidence also an aunt, so it, was, it, works in two, it works on two very different levels. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I'm going to pitch it to Adam Sandler. <laughs> have you seen a Queen ant? <laughs> I don't think I have. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm getting this wrong. But I remember seeing like a, a, a David Attenborough about a Queen ant, or it may have been a termite, but anyway, it was a Queen whatever, and it didn't look like an ant, and it didn't look regal <laughs> at all. It looked like a fucking weird, like, Jab of the hut, little nephew. Yeah. Disgusting, undulating. It was horrible. <laughs> queen, whatever is the next Adam Sandler film as well. It, queen, whatever. Um, a queen of is a whatever. Go on. We're talking about parks and recreation, which I think is probably more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's not really that much to say. You know, everyone was, everyone was just super nice. And I think was, and what's brilliant about that sitcom. I think it's about often you have a sitcom. There's one standout character that is. Hey, that's the classic sitcom character. Yeah. But within that one, there's like three or four, maybe more than that. You kind yeah. of go, hey, they'd be in my top 20 list of best sitcom characters ever. Yeah. So Ron Swanson, but then, you know, go even like down to John Paul Ralphio, all that stuff. You know, yeah. they, those are great characters. Yeah, I know. And, and uh, you know, all of them. There was this bit, it was like that, because the, the second time I did it was the last episode. And there was a big, like, on, it's where they did a, uh, a TV show, it was the Johnny Karate show. Oh yes, yeah. And uh, and there was a bit where the credits rolled, and like for thirty seconds, everybody had to do like a little bit of business, and I just you know did some whatever you know um, found some old rope in my pocket and um, and and got that out, and then uh, the uh, but then watching everybody else's little bits. They were, oh, it was just, it was just great. They were so, um, each one was like, I, I, and, and of course, I can't remember any of them <laughs> now. So that's yeah. where the anecdote must end. <laughs> Still good. And um, Gardens of the Galaxy? Uh, yeah, it's, it's That's a good great. film, right? It's, it's good. I think that's a good film, yeah. yeah it's great. Um, uh, the, 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 um, that was a I had a great time yeah. on that. <laughs> There's the second one coming up, and I've I heard you might be in it though. That doesn't make any sense to me uh, uh, without giving any spoilers. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I I die a rather heroic death. I'm I'm only tiny, but I'm in like four <laughs> scenes or something, and I die this uh, in this sort of spectacular way. And I think from what I've heard, the next film. The first hour of the next film is like a funeral and memorial service <laughs> for uh, for my character. So when I, I I mean I can't wait to see it. I mean I'll watch that bit and then I'll probably uh, I'll probably I'll probably scoot. Uh, but no, I I thought that was that was brilliant uh, that 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 film and, and and I remember when when I auditioned for it, James Gunn, the director. Uh, uh, he was so enthusiastic. It was at Shepperton Studios, um, which still is in great. Uh, it's like the Shepperton Studios have been going for years and years and years, and it hasn't gone bankrupt, and it hasn't. You know, it's all still there. It's all these like these old buildings, and what is it? Been there for like seventy years or something? And uh, so he, he takes me up into this room where it's like all the concept art. He's like, look, come and have a look at this concept art and it was like uh, there were like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of characters and and the, and the cities and the ships and like I was like oh my god this is amazing and he was like you know really what I want to what I want to do is I just want to make Star Wars like the original one the Phantom Menace no the uh, the original one uh it's my favorite film. I said, That's my favorite film. It's like I want to make that, you know. And uh, that was his, his his sort of driving force throughout the. And I, and I think you know he made it his own thing, but it had that flavor to yeah. it. I loved the humor in that film. The and I, and I remember when I heard that um, 
uh, about Rocket Raccoon that, oh God, I've forgotten the guy's name, the one of the most famous actors in the world. Brad, <laughs> Bradley <laughs> Cooper. Thanks, Bradley. Yeah. Um, the, 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 uh, <laughs> I, I remember thinking, because I hadn't seen much of what he'd done, and oh, I, I saw that one about um, people with OCD that, um, that kind of gave me OCD, and, 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 I, and I didn't get all the way through, and, and, I, and I thought, is he, I don't know, is that like they've just got him because like he's like a big name? And my God, he was just brilliant in that film. To be like, he's a CG character and so funny and touching and like, that was amazing. I loved that. I mm. loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what I like about you is you do, you know, you're a proper film star. And you're still, you know, you're still doing your own stuff on the internet. You're still doing crazy little projects. You still you crop up in like still British things all the time. It's like you're working, you know. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not a film star. I, I'm in films, and but you know, you know, that's pretty amazing. It, well, it's, of course, it's great, and I love it. And 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 um, you know, I, I love having such a varied career and and doing lots of different things, and uh, um, you know, like. Uh, and again, going back to what I was saying before, you know, like w working with, you know, the biggest buzz is like, I mean, look, you know what it's like when you, you know, you've been around and I like, sure have. and um, <laughs> you, 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 you know, that thing that you had like when you were in your sort of early 20s of like, oh, you know, you know, like I was saying with Spit and Image, you know, yeah. meeting like Harry Enfield, you know, it's like I could barely speak, you know, and, and, and then as you meet more of these people and you kind of, you just get a bit used to it and, and the thrill, you know, it's sort of sad really, you know, but then there are people that you, um, that you do, you know, you think, oh my God, you know, like I, I was at the, a couple of years ago, I was at the children's BAFTAs and as I, uh, as I came, I wasn't, uh, I was presenting an, an, an award, I think, and, and as I, I saw in the um, standing outside getting his photo taken was uh, Justin Fletcher, who uh, you may know as Mr. <laughs> Tumble if you if you have any uh, if you have any kids. And do you know Mr. Tumble? I do you know Mr. Tumble? You're, you're, you're he has that. come up a couple of times within. Uh, but I met. I also met. We went to um, the Furchester Hotel. Me and my family, <laughs> uh, to see it being filmed. And, and we waited in the corridor to meet Mr. Tumble for about half an hour, and he came out and was very fatigued, but very nice to us. He's a nice, very nice guy, to Justin it was at the time. Right, okay. I'm a big, fa I'm a big fan of his as much as it... Me too! As much, much as he drives me mentally insane. Yeah, yeah, me too. Be a big star on the rock guitar! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to have kids. Uh, anyway, I ran up to him and said... Uh, excuse me. Justin's hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. yeah. I, I, <laughs> okay. I said, uh, Justin, I, I just want to say, uh, you know, yeah, just a big fan, and we're all such big fans of you in our house, and we've watched you for years, and I just want to say it's a real pleasure to me. Uh, and, and he went, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and walked off. Like, like, uh, like, like, maybe like Tom Cruise might have done <laughs> if, if Tom Cruise had been less polite. <laughs> Tom Cruise had no manners, you know, for instance. <laughs> but he is, in the, within the C, I mean, within CBBS. Yeah, he yeah. is, I mean, it was like, the. I've never waited in a corridor for half an hour for someone, you know. It right. was like, this, we're waiting in a cold corridor, going, well, he's going to come there, he's going to come there. We were, we'd driven five hours to get there, and we'd drive five hours back, and it was getting late, and we had a tiny little child with us. And we're going, yeah, no, we'd, we'd be nice. And, and Phoebe's not that bothered. I mean, like, yeah. to be honest, the, it was the least bothered for me. of the three yeah. of you by far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but he was—he was actually quite—he was quite charming and humble when I met him. Um, but then, you know, maybe. He was, but yeah. anyway, I'm sure. Yeah, and I think he's brilliant. But uh, but I did, <laughs> I I did do I did do a film uh, last year with Michael Caine, and that was like the, that was like the best. You know, because he's such a hero of mine, and uh, and I got uh, I play his uh, son, uh, his son-in-law in this film, and all my scenes are with him, and 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 I got that feeling back of like that where I was breathing just like up here, and uh, just so nervous, I didn't sleep the night before, you know, and um, 
uh, I, 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 and we had a day of, uh, or an afternoon of rehearsal. It was filming in New York. We had a film, uh, we, we had met in this hotel room and uh, as I was waiting for him, I was thinking, oh my God, oh my God, I've got to act across the table with, with Michael Caine and, and you know, what if he's like in a bad mood? You know, what if he's like, uh, and then, you know, that thing, the never meet your heroes yeah. thing and, which which I hate because you know we're all we all we're all shits occasionally you know but you know with someone like that it can you know I didn't want you know like I, like for instance when all that horrible stuff came out about Jimmy Savile that just ruined Jimmy Savile for me <laughs> um, you know I I I, I can't I, I can't watch any of his 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 stuff anymore and um, but. Uh, Michael Caine, and you know, he's 82 as well. Yeah, he's like, he's 82, and he's like, and then he, he was so charming, and so uh, he came in, and he said, oh, hello, yeah, um, I'm Michael, pleased to meet you, you know. First of all, you're like, wow, he's like, he, he, he's really tall, you know, he's like, he's like 6'1", or 6'2", or something, you know. And, uh, you know, we sat down, and you know, having a cup of tea, and, uh, oh, thank you, thank you. You know the 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 the, the lady that brought him in. You know, th oh, thank you very. You know, you know when you when you see people like 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 powerful people talking to the the least powerful people in the whatever organization you're in, and and being nice to them. You know, that's. I mean, it shouldn't be, but it's always it, it's a yeah. good indicator of somebody's heart. You know, and and you know he was. <coughs> He started talking about, you know, before we were reading the script here, he said, uh, you know, I just got one of these new um, Apple watches. Uh, my wife bought it for me. And, uh, you know, this thing's great. Uh, you, you, you know, you, uh, what's brilliant about it is there's a little charger. You put it in the bathroom, and then at night you take the watch off, put it on the charger, and in the morning it's all charged. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just thought, I just thought, you <laughs> Fucking hell, you're 82 and you got an Apple Watch, right? And like, you're just like, you know, that's no big deal. It's like he just, he's got it and, and he uses it, you know? And, and, uh, and, and also, I had done this sketch on my uh, short lived sketch show about 10 years ago, which was um, I was obsessed uh, uh, as a young actor with. Um, Michael Caine's acting masterclass that he did for the BBC. And I don't know whether, has anybody seen this sketch? Um, and uh, it, it, it's quite a faithful recreation of, of, of the thing, you know, in terms of like it's a black set and it's basically Michael Caine in, I think it was about 1983, where he is uh, telling a group of actors, he's giving them acting tips. So uh, and and also he's got he's 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 smoking a cigar as well. So you tell it's 1983, and it's really cool. It's like, uh, and so many actors that I know have said that has been so influential because he gives you tips that you would never ever ever learn anywhere else because you don't go to like act, film acting school. You just don't. You might do in like L.A. even, but I think even it's rare there. You know, it's it's like he says in this thing in the original thing from 1982, he says, uh, when the camera's on you and you're having a conversation with somebody else, you keep your eyes, the eye that's closest to the camera, you look at the eye of the, per uh, the, the person's eye, that, uh, of their eye that is closest to the camera. So the camera sees more of your eye and don't move them about like you do in normal conversation where you duck, 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 duck. You just keep that and it's so powerful. And then he demonstrates it and it's like, it's brilliant. And no one ever teaches you that, you know. And so anyway, I was, when I was doing my first scene with him, uh, he, uh, he said to me, um, now, it, now this is your, your close-up, right? What you want to do is you keep your eye, <laughs> the eyes nearest to the camera, and you look at you look at my eye, and on the left of the camera, you look straight at that. And and, and I said, Michael, look, um, 
you know, really, I, I know this because I watched your acting masterclass. I was kind of obsessed with it, and um, so look, I, I, I know it, but, but, but yeah, thanks. It's been so useful, you know. And he, and he says, yeah, it works though, doesn't it? It works. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? And honestly, he's just like so genuine, and like uh, he was like the 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 biggest treat of meeting somebody like a hero you know he's brilliant he's brilliant yeah, he's but i didn't I, I i did tell him after a few days I, I i told him that i'd done this little series of sketches about that particular thing and people were saying to me go on you've got to tell him that you that you've done that thing and i thought yeah, I'm going to go up to my kid and say, hey, you know what? I do an impression of you. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, and I never got a chance to show it to him, but, uh, but I'd love to. You know, maybe I, I'll, I'll meet it. Anyway, the film's coming out uh, next year. What's it called? Uh, uh. It's, <laughs> it's, called uh, it's, it's called Going in Style. It's about three uh, old guys living in Brooklyn who's, uh, they're, they've been best friends for years and years. Um, Michael Caine's like the, the main friend whose house gets repossessed and the other two are being uh, basically like forgotten by the system. They're just old and who cares? And they decide to rob a bank because they think, <laughs> they've worked out a way to do it and they think it's a win-win because they either rob the bank and get all the money. Michael Caine can pay for his granddaughter's education. Uh, and if they get caught, then they just go to prison and probably will have a better life than, they, <coughs> than the shitty life that they do. And, it was, a, and it, was a, it was a film, it was a remake of a 1970s film. That's, so the three guys are Michael Caine, Alan Arkin, and Morgan Freeman. Uh, so, you know. And those, or the, they were fucking amazing as well. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> and like Alan, Alan Arkin is like, um, he and he's the oldest one of all of them. And he's he's just he will just sit there and set and like, it's like he's looking around, wanting to make some kind of joke, <laughs> you know, just like fuck around with somebody, you know. <laughs> And, uh, and Morgan Freeman, wow, and he's like really super tall as well. And, nice. and uh, yeah, but for sheer like, you know, star, like waves of like, you know, I mean, he was like, I almost was, you know, knocked backwards like physically, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so it's, yeah, it's a cool job sometimes, <laughs> it's, you know? It's, but it's sort of, I mean, I find it fascinating with you that it's crazy, I think, that you don't have more, I mean, and I don't feel sorry for you because you've got an amazing life and an amazing career, but you don't sort of seem to have the recognition that I think you deserve, like you, like you say, you do the sketch show and it was really, I, I said this on the last one, but that sketch show was really right down the line, it was, it was, it, you know, anyone... Average. No, no, it was, it was, it was really good, it was like really okay. accessible. Solid it was really accessible <laughs> and really great, and anyone should look at that and go, "Great, well, let's, that's a, we've got a proper stand, we've got a proper sketch show." Oh well, you know, thanks, that, man. That uh, we, that we should at least give a second you, series. You know, to. The, 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 and all this stuff, the, the stuff you're doing online, and yeah, uh, you know, it's it's great stuff. Well, and you're talking about doing a, a sitcom, people going, "Oh no, we don't, no, we don't want that's that." Just life, we don't want that it? guy. It's I mean, just, it makes it's, it's like it's like okay, so you had uh, Lucy Porter on last week. I did, yeah. <laughs> and um, so her husband, yeah. Justin Fletcher, who yeah. plays Mr. No, 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 Justin, Justin Edwards, <laughs> um, <laughs> devised this show called Chat Show Roulette, uh, which, which um, you may have heard, it was a radio, sh they did it on the radio, and we actually did um, a TV pilot of this show, and it was like, it, was, uh, it just baffles me that nobody has said this is a genius idea uh but what the premise is uh justin is this chat show host and you he, he has like four guests so it's like a, it's like a chat show format so he sits behind a desk and then he gets these guests up individually and the guests are all like 
comedy actors, comedians, sort of slight improv -y people. Uh, and the, uh, so the premise is that the, the performers who on this night were uh, Simon Day, uh, me, Matt Lucas, Carrie Ad Lloyd and Mike Wozniak and uh, Rebecca Front, right? So we're, we're all waiting to go on. We go on one by one and Justin will say, uh, will introduce us onto the stage and <laughs> we don't know who we're gonna be when we come out and we've gotta sit there and be interviewed in this character that we know from, we, from that, from the walk, from there to there. So like, uh, I, was, I was telling you before, like Simon Day, was, he was like this, uh, he's, Justin said, okay, please welcome the, uh, he's, just, he's just won the, uh, the Milan Award for the second year running. It's the uh, iconic British designer, um, uh, Phil Cummins, whatever. And so then suddenly Simon's gotta go, right, oh God. Okay, so he walks out and he's got this really sort of loose walk and he's gonna make it totally believable and plausible and, uh, and then Justin asks him all these questions about like, you know, um, oh, he's also got a, a, a carousel of cards with suggestions of just words and stuff that he's got from the audience previously. So Justin will say, uh, congratulations on the award and so I was like yeah well thanks you know and then said something really funny and like everyone's like so excited like shit what's he gonna say next and Justin says so um, I hear I see your latest collection was inspired by lampposts and he says yeah well the thing you know and you've got to like react like really yeah. quickly and it's all like live and you know fucking hell it was so brilliant and they did it on Radio 4 for a couple of series and it didn't work so well on, I think there's something about having to see these people that makes it really work. And, you know, but like, look, you know, TV and people who got the power to do these things is like, it, this kind of thing happens all the time. Of course, you know? but it's kind of just crazy, you know, it's, it, it makes sense of everything and it's, it, just, it just seems crazy to me, but yeah, I mean, good things get through. Yeah. At the moment, just like the last four or five things I've seen that have got commissioned, just think, oh, so. Well, but you know, but the good things do get through, and as well. it does make you wonder how good things get through. Like that, yeah. what, it, what I mentioned before, uh, flea bag. Yeah. I mean, wow, how the fuck did that happen? Yeah. And it's just that's just amazing. I mean, I, I, I uh, I'm slightly out of the uh, completely out of the loop with like modern comedy, but I, I, I haven't really. What else is good out at the moment that's like in that sort I mean, of... There's loads of catastrophes really great. Oh, yeah, of course. Catastrophes, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Catastrophe. Um, that was, I was on with Rob Delaney. Yeah, I you think, were last time. Like, yeah, the, yeah. the last time. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. And then, and then what, el what else is there, you know? There, there is, I mean, I think there are quite... A, there are a few here and there, but then there's yes, a lot... what? <laughs> um, I haven't seen it, but chewing gum's meant to be very good. I don't even know what that is. When you said it before, I thought you were talking about literal uh, chewing gum. <laughs> right. Uh, and... Uh, there, Those I, just made a I really like. I really like Man Down. There's, I think there's a lot of good... I oh, think I Drifters is really good, which is a kind of more, like, slightly more mainstream but rude uh, sitcom. Oh, okay. There's quite a lot of good sitcoms, but I think there are... There isn't really... The sketch stuff is... It's sort of gone out the window, and that used to be the way that you discovered a new, per you know, that new yeah. people got discovered, and it used to be a way of doing very inventive comedy. Yeah, and and now it's David but Williams the, getting his mate in to do some Monty Python sketches. Well, that, which I haven't seen, know, but that's the, what. But I, you know, I mean, I saw the Joanna Lumley one, yeah. and I thought that was there was a sketch on that. Oh man, did anyone see that that Joanna Lumley one? I think it was from last Christmas where they had the. The boy band, <laughs> and they had this boy band, and 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 David was being this, like kind of Simon Cowell kind of agent music producer, and uh, he had this, he had this boy band of like four like kind of young kind of cool looking eighteen year old guys, and Joanna Lumley was this, at the end was this kind of weird. Uh, like sort of old, like old sort of Turkish woman <laughs> who looked like a, uh, I don't even know what it, what her character was. It looked like she, she, she was putting curses on people. 
And it was like he was having this conversation. Now one of you is is going to have to go. And of course he gets rid of all of them and and uh, and makes her the star. But anyway, it was it was very funny and weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, but sketch shows are expensive to do. Yeah. But this shit, you know, it used to be the way... I mean, so, whatever, even if it's the best sketch show in the world, David Williams has already done a pretty successful sketch show. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you'd feel like, let's give the opportunity to, to someone new. I don't know, you know, it just, it, just feels, it just feels like that's the way... TV's playing it safe in a lot of areas. Look, anyway, look, we better let the... It's love... This because it's the last one. I don't want to end. It's been a beautiful series. And, and thanks so much for... Oh. Oh, wow. Coming and being the final guest on the, on the oh, show. It's my I tried pleasure. to get Brian Blessed, but he was wasn't available. <laughs> uh, so um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, so he's he's, he's, he's having been... a pedicure. <laughs> it takes <laughs> two days. Oh, and I forgot to talk about the tick, which looks amazing as well. Is that is that going to happen? Is oh that... yeah, yeah, the yeah. tick. Yeah, well, uh, this is a show that I did for Amazon Prime, uh, which uh, you can see actually the pilot is on. Amazon, if you if, if you if you got that, uh, we did this pilot. It's a, like a cult, uh, s- surreal superhero show. It's sort of a, it kind of any way I describe it sounds kind of uh, doesn't do it justice, but it, I, I think it's good, you know. And and uh, and and we're filming it in New York from uh, the end of February. Oh, great for a few months but yeah oh great and I thought like wow this part and this show is like it's it's it, it's really in, it could be like my best job ever you know and, and I've always wanted to live in New York since I was a little kid and and uh, and then now you know Donald Trump you know and then like and it's sort of taken my just taken the last bit of like you know romance and magic out of the whole America, New York, you know? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Oh, what a bummer. <laughs> Peter Serafin. <Sarah Finch. laughs> <laughs> you can turn around. I think New York's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it will be okay. He doesn't live in New York. Mm, yeah, he he gonna, sort of wants to live there just gonna, instead of where he's meant to live and have yeah. weekends off. It's going to be a great present. Let's give him a chance. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen nothing to suggest he won't be. Let's give him a chance. Yeah. I've seen yeah. nothing to suggest he won't be amazing at this. He yeah, said he yeah. will be. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I would be amazing if I was in Guardians of the Galaxy as well. But that, that, and that apparently isn't enough for me to get that job. Which some people would say would le- be less important than being president of the United States. But I'd uh, be great. Just give, put a word in for me. Remember the bit where I went. <laughs> you believed it. No, it was, I was pretending. <laughs> I was pretending. I was acting. I was acting. I'm looking. Fuck man, I'm don't looking, do that. Honestly. I'm looking at this <laughs> eye as well. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone for listening and uh, coming and attending. And thank you very much to my final guest for Sirius Dan. He's been very really thank you. Fantastic. We're back in June. June 2017. The Ferris on World. No, thank you, man. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>